Today I will show how I did this really cool photo manipulation. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Neymanja and welcome to another really fun episode. Today you will learn a lot of interesting tips, tricks and techniques from this really cool photo manipulation tutorial. I will show how I did this mosquito war photo manipulation, but with that difference that unfortunately I cannot give you my tutorial files because I need to use them for something else. But this could be a really good challenge for you guys. I'm challenging you to make, to create your own version of this kind of idea. So you need to take a photo of yourself or your friend, like I took a photo of myself. You can use mobile phones, cameras, whatever you have with you. Mobile phones are nowadays always practically with us. So there is a camera uh, which you can use and you can use a daylight combination of daylight and just uh, some kind of additional LED or flash or whatever you have. I use the combination of window light and this cool RGB LED light that I did a review few weeks ago you can watch it on the link right here this is awesome powerful LED light it has complete RGB spectrum or you can just use some kind of lamp like I have here so you can maybe add additional light source be creative try to do your best now let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin right guys we are here in Photoshop and as you can see I did a self-portrait I took a photo of myself and I have my mosquito war always ready because there are a lot of mosquitoes nowadays and that's how I got inspired for this uh, photo manipulation idea because I was uh, fighting with a lot of mosquitoes these days and I got idea to create some kind of uh, robot mosquitoes I did those mosquitoes using Cinema 4D. I will not cover those that part because it's a completely different story. It's a 3D world, completely different than Photoshop, but you can find a lot of interesting things online. And there are a lot of great tutorials online about 3D if you want to learn a 3D a little bit more. So first, what I like to do here is I like to make myself a little bit more beautiful because as you can see right here, see my eyes, see this, that's when you got really late into bed and get up pretty early so you have these bags under eyes so i just want to fix that really quickly i will show you one method that i like to use so maybe you can use it too in your beauty retouching or whatever so i like to use curves and because as you can see this is a darker part i like to brighten up this part so i will bright this bit like that then I will press Ctrl or Command I to invert that. And then I will use a brush, make a smaller and maybe 10% or even 5%, just small opacity value. And I like to just build, build this up. So making brush bigger and smaller. This is how I like to do. And now you can see there is some discoloration here. There is more like a saturated orange color, but I don't want this to be distracted to me so I want to create a new black and white adjustment layer over the top of everything just to have everything in black and white and now I will just play with lights with the shapes I don't want those colors I don't care about those colors actually so this is it if I unzoom it this is cool I want to brighten this part too this is some kind of a shadow so if you want, you can use this method, it's really cool. And it will give you nice results, but you need to spend a little bit more time doing this. Of course, you can use healing brush and just make a mess with that, but I don't like that. I like to do this slowly and to build the effect. So, okay, I will not go too much into details right now this is pretty cool so let me see this is pretty decent so before and after you can see a big difference before and after i'm pretty satisfied with that and now i will uncheck this black and white adjustment layer and see a lot of saturated areas here and there so i will fix that really easily i will go with hue and saturation adjustment layer and lower the saturation a bit like that then again invert the mask Control or command i and with a white brush again slowly 
maybe 10% just to be a little bit faster for this tutorial but usually guys I like to do this pretty nice and slow so slowly desaturate areas and maybe if you need you can change even the color I will not fix my eyes because I'm like Mm, I'm okay with that because I was I'm fighting with mosquitoes and I'm nervous and stressed and my eyes are crazy so I don't want to fix that okay but this this looks pretty decent right now so let me show you before and after just a couple of minutes really nice and easy fix and I didn't mess with the skin texture etc so I really like it okay I will I will now leave it like that maybe I can add another curse adjustment layer make everything darker and just dodge this part a bit but with maybe 5% opacity brush just a bit and put this into luminosity blending mode because I don't want to affect colors only only brightness so this is cool and like that all right so now I will group everything right here press ctrl or command G and before that I cannot group it why why cannot I cannot group it well because I have a locked layer right here I'll just click it once and that's it now I will select everything like this control or command G group it and name it model or me but model is okay now we'll delete this layer it was just for help and now we can start with everything that we need to build here so first what I like to do I like to use this fire image and I will paste it right here and make it smaller now it's too big right and uh, maybe something like this for now and I will put it into screen blending mode because screen blending mode will ignore the black color actually the black will be invisible in screen blending mode if you are not familiar in blending modes how to use them and what are they for you can watch my tutorial about that on the link right here so check it out they're really cool so now because the background wasn't 100 complete 100 completely black i will use the levels or curves clip to affect only the fire and i will just add blacks make it even darker so now the blacks are invisible and maybe brighten up the brighter parts so this is cool and now I can position this somewhere here for now I will leave it like this and I will hide this just a second then I will go right here create a new layer above everything okay and I will call it hole because I will make a hole I will make a mess I will use a stamp tool stamp clone tool click here to sample it and just just make a hole whatever shape you like I don't know this is a hole that mosquito made by firing on it you will see so probably something like this is cool okay then I will bring back this add a layer mask on that and control click on the hole to load this as a selection and then I will fill this with the black because black is foreground color I will press control and backspace and that's it but now I don't want this clean cut like that what I like to do I like to go back on the mask with a black color as you can see 100% opacity everything is cool but I need to use a brush okay 100% opacity and white color and I want to bring back some fire but this is just simple round brush and I'm not satisfied how this works so I will use my special made cloud dust smoke brush for that in case you don't know how to create your own smoke cloud dust brushes you can watch my tutorial about that on the link right here or you can go on my website purchase those set of brushes for just one dollar the link is down there in the description it's your choice right so I will just right click and go to my cloud dust brushes and I will use this one the first one and as you can see this is much better because I have more organic way to play with the fire this is cool okay and this looks nice maybe just maybe I will first unlink the unlink the link icon between the mask and the layer because I just want to play with the layer not a mask maybe I will make a fire a bit smaller like like this and right click to warp it and maybe bring a little bit up 
a little bit down maybe it's something like like this why not we can do whatever we want so this is okay and this is really cool I got a fire on I don't know the English word for this but for mosquito weapon I got a fire on mosquito weapon that's cool also guys as you can see I have like a red light orange or reddish light on my left side on this side okay because uh, this fire will cause the light on my my left side of the body and for that I use this small LED light so I just put it on like this orangey color now it's white you cannot see because it's too bright and uh, this is it I can just lower the rest you can see maybe you can see no okay it doesn't matter you can see on my face it's warmer orange tone so I use this to simulate the fire from mosquito weapon okay or fly weapon but in this case it's mosquito weapon and now what I like to do I like to go and find my mosquitoes this is my mosquitoes and I made them as I already said in Cinema 4D and this is how mosquito looks so it's really nice like a robot mosquito mechanical mosquito that can fire from this trunk here so I made a few of them and uh, reposition across the space and render them and then I got this so I will just copy this image go back here and just paste it above here and this is it I have my robot mosquitoes this is really really cool but now I will play a little bit more with them so as you can see my mosquito another one and they're really nice and ugly in the same time I don't know how to explain that but I don't like mosquitoes at all okay so these are mosquitoes mosquito all right I will go with a laser uh, with a lasso tool select this one press control or uh, control shift J or command shift J on a Mac to create a new layer out of the selection so this is M number two this is mosquito number two then I will go back here I will select this one this is M number one because this is my main mosquito that I want to slap with this but this guy fire on this mosquito weapon I don't know the English word and now let's go this is mosquito number three shift control J or shift command J then go back to this layer this is mosquito a little bit more here mosquito number four but I need to rename them M number three and number four and let's position them in that order and this is the last one the small mosquito I will leave it mosquito because ah, it's tiny small mosquito back uh, behind me okay so this is cool now I don't know what to do first so let's let's create some laser beams first okay so let's create laser beams from this mosquito right here let me show you a really cool trick so this is number three yeah this is number three and I will go and uh, actually the laser beams doesn't need to be in the folder where mosquitoes are so I will create a group control command G mosquito okay and the model is right there and then this is a laser laser beam so there's a really cool trick you can just use a brush you can use a regular brush or hard brush maybe a little bit softer okay white color I like to use white color we'll see why and you can just like holding a shift maybe this is yeah too tick even more like that you can hold shift click and then click again then click click again and you can create some laser beams but this is not straight and uh, it's okay if you want to create like his doing something crazy like this but I don't want that I will show a really cool trick for that just create the first point and then create the last point right here and this is it now you can you can just press control command T and uh, you can just change the position he's shooting this from his trunk all the way down it's a strange strange angle of the trunk and this but uh, it will work maybe I can cut this out and you will see but what I like to do with this 
I like to maybe do this. So you can go right click, perspective, and just do this. Why? Because I want this part to be a little bit thinner than this part, because this part is closer to the camera. So we can, we can do that. Okay, and then position it here and uh, go back to free transform, press and hold control and just position this however you want. I will press enter and this is our laser beam. But now we'll create a layer mask and with a black brush, with really hard brush like that, it doesn't need to be like 100%, 90% is cool. I will go and make my brush bigger and I just want to cut like, like this. This is first, this is maybe, let me see, even smaller like this, like this, so I have two laser beams and I don't want rest, I don't care. I want few of them that are coming here. So to have impression that he's shooting through the mosquito weapon, right? And uh, this is it, so this is cool. And I can make a copy of this, Control or Command J to make a copy move it and I can move it a little bit here like this. Why not? I can always nudge it. And this is cool. Like he shoot it twice and move left and right, etc. So now we can go to mosquitoes. This is mosquito number three. I can just use a lasso tool and just lasso out this trunk. Press control or command T and just rotate this and move it uh, because why not? I can do that, so let's do it. And move it like this, and now he's shooting in right direction. Wow, it's really cool. All right, this is a really cool trick if you need to, to fix something on the go. Okay, now let me show you a really cool trick how to make even better impression that these are laser beams. I don't like them to be white. I like them to be reddish, like a lightsaber, but the, the brightest part, the hottest part are, is the middle, so that's why it's completely white. Like. You can see when it's really bright and hot, this looks white, but it's orange. So this is yellow. You can see that and blue, but it's almost white because it's so bright and it's a rhyme. So you need to go to laser beam, double click on it and go to layer style dialog box. And now I will go to outer glow because I want to add outer glow. And this is it. This is already over, but let me show you what I did. I like to put blend mode into linear dodge. I like to choose the red color, a little bit darker like this. Okay, then I like to play with my settings. So you need to choose a spread and the size. So maybe like that, or maybe, maybe more like this. Let me see, maybe 20, 20 is arrows, let me see. This is cool. And that's it, that's basically it. So I have my laser beams in red. I can just press Alt or Option key, grab the effect and just put it here. And this is it guys. As you can see my laser beams are ready to go. We can make them a little bit better by creating a new layer and make uh, name them glow. Name it glow. All right. Put it into linear dodge blending mode. Choose a color reddish, maybe a little bit more orangey, a little bit brighter. We will see. And with a brush, probably around 20% or so, a little bit smaller brush, and a really soft round brush, 0% hardness, you can just go and add even more glow around this if you want. If you don't want, it's okay too. So this is cool. Just to emphasize this a bit. All right, so we can do that. We can lower the opacity, play with that, etc. This is completely up to you, however you want, but this is a cool trick to create those kind of laser beams. You can maybe make them even longer if you want, etc. So whatever you feel, you can do it. Okay, so what I will do, I will make them a little bit longer. I just need to paint with a white color, 100% opacity on the layer mask. And as you can see, I make can make them a bit longer because now they are too short. This is cool. Now, because I'm using soft brush, 
I have those crazy edges, but actually I like those edges like like that so here it can be shorter because it's far away but here because it's closer to the camera they can be a bit longer and same here so I will make them a bit longer like this and this is really cool so that's why using layer masks you can always change your mind later no problem all right this is it so I will do exactly the same for this mosquito white right here. I will create those laser beams and I will just fast forward this because there is no sense to watch this twice. I don't want to waste your time. So I will just group this and uh, name them laser beams number one from this mosquito right there. And then I will create everything else. See you soon. Alright guys, so this is it. I made these two laser beams. Laser beams number two. So this is it. The mosquito war is more obvious right now. Okay, so what we can do next? We can go to this guy, this guy right here. And uh, I can move it to fit my eyes better. I can actually move it all the way here. Like it's going out of the frame, but I will not do that. I'll just put him somewhere here. Probably, probably like this. It's it's okay. So it can it can be pretty pretty good right here. I will save this document. I just want to press Control Command S from time to time because you know Photoshop can crack pretty easily. And now let's let's go and move this guy right here, maybe a little bit down, and this guy a little bit down like that. And I want to go with this guy, use uh, color balance, right? And clip to effect only this guy and I can make him a little bit more reddish like that. And also I can make him a bit darker because he is down below and needs to be a bit darker like, like this. Let me see, this is pretty cool. So I want this mosquito to be because he is in the shade. So this is cool. Okay, so we can make another trick. Let's expand this we can go here create a new layer of press the effect only the mosquitoes and this will be glow uh, it's not actually glow but I will name it like that I will use again reddish color darker almost reddish orangey color put it into linear dodge blending mode and I just want to emphasize the fire effect so I need a soft brush like that and I need maybe 10% opacity brush, something like this. And just, just make this things a bit more red, right? Maybe this guy, he has already reddish tint that I made in 3D, as you can see here, but maybe just a bit more. And this guy here, red from, from above from the fire. This guy is already red and this guy is already, but let's make it a little bit more. Okay, so this is pretty cool. The next thing what we can do is to add some kind of uh, mosquito bites on my skin. So this is really cool effect. It can add to overall effect and I will show you how really easily you can do that. So let's go all the way up. Let's name this mosquito bite right and uh, let's make it just make it or maybe somewhere here the laser these mosquitoes are not like a regular one they are biting with their their the laser so they are hitting the lasers on the skin and you have wound so not good okay so I want to sample this color just for a start and I want to use 100% opacity click it and this is it because I sample the same color you cannot see, but trust me, this is the result. If I move it, you can see. Okay, so now I will double click on layer and I want to make some layer properties. So first I want to go to bevel emboss, all right? And let me see, the light is coming from left to right on this arm, so I will, this is already here, so this is cool. Then I will put this into overlay 
as it is and I will choose some bright color for highlights. So as you can see my highlights, it can be pretty bright like white, but I don't want completely white. I want more like bright, bright orangey color and the shadows. Shadows are on the other side here and shadows will be probably this kind of darker tone maybe a bit brighter and it's in multiply blending mode but now let's let's go here and play with some some settings as you can see i want to create that bump but i need to be careful with these settings to see what is working here and this is the height actually the depth of the bump so this is cool but this is nice this is pretty nice but i want more like shadow around so you will see i want to go to drop shadow and this is cool but i want don't want this color so um shadow will make like redness around this so i want something like this distance like that size and spread maybe like this and i want some reddish tint like maybe like that and put it into multiply blending mode let me see oh this is nice so maybe a bit brighter we need to see this looks good and uh, maybe a little more like redness this is cool but i need to go here and lower the opacity of actually maybe make this a bit darker like mm, like that maybe let me see this is cool so this is nice like i have a big bite also guys you can play with the shadows maybe this is uh, too too br uh, dark maybe something like this you can also change the blending modes maybe you want to overlay and then change the color to darker there are a lot of possibilities guys how you can do this but i'm just showing you one of them and the cool thing is now that i made one of these things it looks like something else but it looks like a nipple but it's okay so you can just press and change the size of the uh, brush and just add a few of these bites but here i will sample this color and this is cool so i have several bites here and maybe here on the neck i want to have small smaller a bit smaller i can change the brush you can you can make something like this and for nemanja but no right so something like this as you can see really nice cool bite and uh, maybe we can make it here but if you want to make it here then i advising you to create a new layer I'll just duplicate this uh, sample this color click it here but i will go back to the effects to, uh, and change the the direction of the light because as you can see now the light is coming from this side on 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 this part here so just to have that in mind so you can do that too and then maybe you want to change some properties here and there this is cool maybe maybe like that and i can lower the opacity or i can lower the fill it will have a similar effect because i didn't paint anything so something here and this is if i want to create i will raise this but just to show you if you want to create something here too so this is how how you can do so this is nice maybe one here or just here i'm not sure maybe a bit smaller why not ah let's let's go one here no or here no all right so you can do whatever you want this is just a quick example how you can create those uh, mosquito bites on your skin there are plenty of other ways how you can do it too but this is a really cool and fast way to do it right let's go back and do something else on this image right so that i have a bunch of these mosquito bites i will leave them like that i will make a group and i will name them mb mosquito bites this is cool okay so now i'm missing here something i want to add something in the background and then to play with a little bit with the depth of feel etc and maybe i want to add a little bit more brightness actually the the orangeness to to my skin the redness to my skin the glow from the fire etc so let's let's do those things first what i like to do i like to add uh, no mosquito sign in the background and we will create it completely in photoshop so we will use a shape tool and we will use a custom shape tool and here among the 
defaults, a lot of defaults Photoshop um, shapes, we have, see, these shapes. And I will go right here, press and hold shift, because otherwise we will have crazy shape. I will press and hold shift like this. All right. And I will choose a fill. I want fill to be red color, maybe a little bit darker red like this. And stroke, I don't want stroke. I don't want stroke, so this is it. I'll just press enter and we have really cool sign. Now we need to play with the mosquitoes and to put everything inside. So first what I like to do, I like to create a new layer below the current shape layer by holding control or command key and click on new layer. This will be like, uh, I don't know how to name it, but uh, back. Okay, back. Now we'll use elliptical marquee tool. And again, holding shift, I just want to add a white back, uh, not completely white, but almost white background like this. Okay, and I now need to use some mosquitoes. So let's use this one, mosquito number four. I will just make a copy of this mosquito, put it all the way up and uh, put it right here. I will enlarge it, control command T, make it like this and I will desaturate it. There is a cool command uh, keyboard uh, shortcut for that. Shift control U or shift command U and this is it. And also what I like to do, I like to add a curves adjustment layer, clip it to effect only mosquito. And I would like to make it darker. Why not? I can do that. Maybe like maybe a bit contrast. This is cool. Also, I like to add the mask to mosquitoes. So I'll add a mask like this and I will a lot of this selection by holding control command and a lot of this selection and just paint out this. Okay, and I will leave this on the red and this on red. Just why not? Just for uh, for fun. And now I can group this everything, press control or command G, name this sign M sign, like no mosquito. Alright, and I want to go and play with these just some random textures. You will see why I want to make it a little bit more interesting. So I will create new layer, paste the texture here because it's way bigger than I need. I'll make it smaller like that. And I will clip it to affect only the sign layer. This is cool. And this is it. This is really cool moon like no mosquito sound sign. Mm, not, not quite. So I need to put this into some blending mode. So let me see. I can go with multiply, looks cool. Let's do multiply. And also I want to desaturate this, control shift U or command shift U. And this is it, I just desaturated. And this looks really nice. Also I can go here to mosquito and select mosquito. And I can create a layer and then invert the layer mask, sorry, and invert the layer mask. If I don't want my mosquito to be affected, also I can fix this just by painting with the white and maybe 20% opacity and just affect the mosquito with 20% opacity. So you can do play with this however you want. Then I can go with another background. This one is cool too. So I'll clip it again to affect only that. And I just want to add some kind of rust here. So we can go here to hard light, why not? And I will press and hold Alt Option key, click on the layer mask to lower just the layer, black layer mask, and then with the white color, I will just slowly add these details around here. Not everywhere, but just, just here and there. So this is cool. I really like it. I don't want to have it here. And this is my no mosquito sign. So I will now group everything. Oh, I don't need actually to group it. I will I will group it. Okay, group it. No, no mosquito. Sign. All right. And now what I like to do, I like to position it somewhere here, maybe to make it bigger, a bit like this and position it here behind me. So to make it behind me, I need to make a selection of myself. I will go back to my layer. This is a model. This is me. Okay. And I will go to quick selection tool and I will say Photoshop, please select the subject, select myself for myself, for me, right? And he did a pretty good job, but here where I actually need it, he messed up. 
Hmm. I will complain to the Adobe guys. They messed up my hair parts here. Okay, so almost done. And here they messed up my eyebrows too. Right, Adobe? Please don't do that anymore. Right, so I don't need this part actually. So this is cool. If I want, I can press Q on a keyboard and just with the brush, I can just go with uh, white brush, 100% opacity and just add those details here. But uh, this is, if you want to be really picky about this, but for the sake of this tutorial, uh, let's let's not waste too much time, but this is how you can, how you can do it. Okay, so I'll press Q again. This is cool. And go back here to the sign and just create a layer. And this is it. This is really cool. I have some ribbon on my forehead and I am like a warrior, crazy warrior with the big wound here. Oh no, I don't like it. I just want to go right here. Press Control Command I to invert it. And this is really cool. So now I can unlink this link icon between the mask and uh, group and I can move the group. So I will just make it even bigger because I will blur it, you will see. So let's, mm, let me see. This, is, this looks cool, but because I want to blur it, I want to convert this into smart object, all right? Then I will go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now because I have everything as a smart object, I can always go back and change the blur value if I don't like it, if it's too much, etc. So something something like this right for a start not bad it's back in the background i can lower the opacity don't do this because if you're lowering the opacity you will see through the sign but in this case because the background it's completely dark one color lowering the opacity is similar like i paint that kind of a color on multiply blending mode or some other but making the, the sign darker so i will just a bit lower the opacity and then i will go with a curse adjustment layer, clip it to affect only the sign, make everything darker, invert with control command I, invert the mask, and now I'll paint with a white, really soft brush, maybe 20 or so percent, 10% opacity, and just build the effect because this part here is darker. This part of the sign is more in shadow, maybe even darker like this this is cool so also i can just go and uh, add hue and saturation adjustment layer because it's in shadow usually things that are in the shadow are less saturated so this looks really nice and uh, if i want to make it more blurry i just double click on that smart filter and this is cool but maybe around around 12. okay so this is cool for now i have no mosquito sign and uh, see this, hmm, not quite happy with this, but we can fix it or if you watch it for Instagram, etc., you don't need to worry too much, but we can always go back and then fix the mask. Now I don't want to change anything. Okay, let's go back to this mosquito right here, to M number two. I will convert him to a smart object two and I will apply filter blur, Gaussian blur to this guy too, because I want him to be again out of focus because he is he is out of focus near the camera right something like this and also we can do for uh, the um, for these um, laser beams so I can select laser beams right and what I can do I can go with the blur tool and just blur this a bit but it won't be so good because of the layer mask and everything so we need to right click on the layer mask say apply layer mask right and now we can just add some kind of blur and here i can say apply layer mask and add some kind of blur just a little bit so it's a bit blurry not too much this is cool we can do the same for this guy right here so convert to smart object filter Gaussian blur and not too much this guy is not so far away it's almost above my head maybe two and I will leave it like that also guys we can go with wings and make the wings a little bit blurry so we can go let me see 
there are a few ways how you can do it. I will go into Smart Object, not like that, but double click on Layer. I will go right here and I will select the wing and I will press and hold Shift and select this one too, just the wing. And I will make a copy by pressing Control Command J, right? And now I will go to Filter Blur, Motion Blur, and uh, I will just blur this a bit like that and I can go right here and uh, just hide the original ones but not all the way so this part will be more visible let me let me create a black background to see what we are doing here so we just add a blur right here okay we can leave it like this and this is cool but what I like to do I like to go right here and display with the two levels of layers. So this is cool. Now I need to press Control Command S to save this smart object. And then I can go back to my document. And as you can see, this is cool, but with this black background, because I add it, I just need to delete it. Press Control Command S, go back. And now this looks really nice. I can add even more of these motion blurs if I want. So I can go back, let me show you. I know it's a little bit longer tutorial, but if you want to make something really nice, you need to spend a little bit more time. So I just want to have this as one wing, shift control J or shift command J to make it in a separate layer. And this is actually, yeah, just, yeah, this is already on a, separate layer so I'll just go and rotate this oops rotate this bit like that and uh, this one too rotate it a bit and also I can lower the opacity of those two a bit like that and now if I go back as you can see this is cool but um, I have this why well because our canvas is shorter so like that and everything is nice so we can do that we can even lower the opacity even more etc so you need to go back and forth to play with it to see if this is something that you like right this is cool but i'm not a big fan of how it looks right now so let's let's make it a little bit more down like that and this one a little bit more down like that and then we can group them and add even more motion blur to that like this and now let me see now it's much better all right so we can you can do this for this guy too if you want you can just make a copy another wing is right here this but it's not too much visible because of the perspective but all the things that you can do actually. Let's let's fast forward this. I will do this in fast forward. All right guys, so this is it. We have some small motion blur on the wings. This is an optional again. If you want to do it, this is how you can do it. Also this small mosquito right here. I want to add, I want to put him again into smart object. And then I want to add filter blur, motion blur, just a bit, oh, he's too fast. Just a bit of motion blur because he is actually maybe 13. He's actually moving. So 13 is, uh, it's enough. You can see that he's moving. So this is cool. All right. And uh, this guy right here, we can add the same. We can go right click, convert to smart object. And again, filter motion blur. And again, small motion blur, maybe to move him even closer, like he will bite. He will bite me. Okay, and this is this is practically it. Okay, now what I like to do, I like to collapse first all of these things. Okay. And the model, etc. And I want to go back to the model. Go right here, create a new layer and add highlight and put this layer into linear dodge blending mode again, choose like a bright, 
actually a darker reddish color and with really soft brush 0% hardness 10% opacity or even lower I want even darker color I can just add a little bit more brightness here and there especially especially here right so this is cool you can do things like that you can dodge and burn to make it even more interesting but I will not do everything now because this tutorial is already too long but you got a point you, you saw all of these in a lot of my previous tutorials so a lot of things like dodging and burning and things like that I repeat it here but this is practically it right guys now I will just go all the way to the top merge everything together into one final layer and do a color grading in Dope Camera Raw and finish for today. So Shift Control Alt or Shift Command Option E on a Mac, merge everything into one layer, go back to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and here I will just do a quick color grading. So let's expand this a bit. I like to add a little bit of contrast, add a little bit of texture, and a bit of clarity, not too much. Also, I will boost the shadows a touch and then what I like to go uh, go go to a split toning and choose some kind of tone for shadows so maybe I can even go maybe to the reds why not something like like this and this is cool and uh, then I can just sharpen everything lower the radius I'm holding alt or option key right now to see the mask otherwise I will not see anything this is cool and probably I can go here to this tab like that if you want to. That's an option. So play with this bit. Okay. And I'll press OK. So this is it. This is just a slight, slight color grading. So before and after. I like it like this. You can add some kind of a grain at the top of it, etc. So as you can see here, I messed up a little bit. I can go back to the model here and I can just erase this because actually I don't want my head is not glowing. There is no sense for that, except I don't know if one if it wants to explode. So this is it and I made it a little bit messy here, but not too much. Okay, and now I can merge everything again together and just repeat the last filter. So Control or Command F, and it will repeat that. And this is it. So, guys, as you can see, really nice before and after, subtle change. You can go crazy with color grading however you want, but I really like it. Something like that. And uh, our Mosquito War tutorial is finally over. Right guys, so that's it for today. I really hope that you like this tutorial and that you learn a lot of interesting tips, tricks and techniques out of this one that you can later apply on your own images, on your own photo manipulations, your own projects, whatever you're doing. Now this is a challenge for you as I already said at the beginning. Try to create something similar. Actually it doesn't need to be the similar topic, but try to take a photo of yourself and just add on that photo a lot of elements and create some kind of interesting story. I was inspired, as I already said, by a lot of mosquitoes these days here, and I have my, I would probably call this forever, a mosquito weapon. Although it's more fly, fly weapon, because these holes are too big, but mosquito weapon. You can do whatever you want, you can be creative. Check out my video about creativity and imagination to get more idea how to train your imagination and how to be even more creative and uh, more productive. So just have fun, practice, experiment, and if you create something really cool and awesome, interesting, upload to Instagram and tag me. I really want to see what you came up after watching this video. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave me down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer it. And also, guys, if you like this content, if you appreciate this episode, just press the like button down below, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe in case you're not already, and also ring that bell 
to get notified about all the future episodes. If you want to help me to make this channel even bigger and better, you can do that by supporting me via my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. And I just want to say a huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys. Without your help, it would be a much, much harder. So thanks for huge, unselfish help. And to all you guys, thank you for watching this episode. Thank you for being here with me in this creative journey. Have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun episode. Bye bye.